I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the GMM Takeover of the Swim Swam Podcast. Today, we have four-time Olympic gold medalist, six-time Olympic medalist, and Team Speedo athlete, Ryan Murphy, who's going to explain to me why he didn't win gold at the recent Indy FINA World Cup. It's uh, you came, you came, you had a great world championships this past summer. You got gold. You went a fifty one hundred. You ripped a fifty one in the hundred meter back. Then you, you know, you. I, I think you took a long vacation. You came back. I was expecting a bigger performance at the FINA World Cup, and was disappointed. What happened? Yeah, well, it's uh, the season is is always one. It's great to it's great to be on. It's great to see you, Mel. Uh, but two, yeah, like, I think the season is very much one foot in front of the other. Um, and, and I'm kind of keeping that mentality all the way through the summer. So, I mean, I, I would have loved if I, if I had gone back into the water and started training really quickly after the summer, I would have loved to do the entire series and, and go after it. Um, but just the dynamics of, of how long I needed to take off and until I felt ready to get back in the water, um, that lent itself to, to just go into Indy and, and swimming tough out there. I wanted to come in hot. Because I wanted to make a confession that uh, in, in our in our last talk, I, I got some emails from from Ryan Murphy fans. Apparently, there are Murph fans out there, and they were upset. They thought that I was too rough on you, and I responded that they didn't understand sarcasm, and they said, "Keep it straight." So, um, <laughs> I will keep it straight. Uh, so, in, in reality, I expect to win always. The uh, but let's just let's, let's just break it down since it was very recent. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're back into it. I just pulled up your results. You were at the Indy world cup. You were second to 50 back and 22, 99. That's solid. You were uh third and hundred, hundred back 49, six, seven third and the tuner back one fifty point five six. How, how did you like, how much, where are you on training pulling off these times? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's early, it's early in the season for me. Um, so really like when, when I got back into the water, which was, pretty much like early to mid September. Um, okay. I, we, we kind of just sat down and it's like, I don't, I don't really think we have a ton of room to, to rest for, for Indy. Um, and, and it's really like everything, everything we do is, is going to be geared towards July. Um, and that's not to say that like other things aren't important, but like priority number one is, is, is July and, and there'll be some checkpoints along the way where we're trying to see some things, but the works, the work's been great so far this year. Um, and I'm honestly really happy with the way the meet went. I felt like day one, I was, I was pretty rough. Um, like I got back to the hotel room that night and I'm like, man, like Ryan, you suck. Like, what are you doing? Um, and then it just got better each day. So it's good. Like kind of whipped me back into racing shape a little bit um, against really good competition. So, so I feel great about it. It's I, those are those are those are fast swims for for just getting back into it. And it's um, I, I how can I phrase this question? World champs, Olympic Games, the big stage. You're always you're either winning, or you're meddling, or you're making people people suffer who put their hands on the wall in front of you. We've got young talent backstroke in the United States, uh, Hunter Armstrong, Shane Casas, and and they it, they appear to to be very very nervous on the big stage. And it seems like you're. I, it seems like you step up and you can get it done, like a stalwart stock. Um, is that a superpower, or is that a, is that is that a, is is my impression incorrect? No, I mean I, I honestly love the I love the big meets. Uh, that's that's why I swim. Um, to to be honest, like going to a big meet, feeling the adrenaline, um, adjusting based on the nerves. Like those are all things that I that I really really enjoy. Um, but I, I think I think a lot of people enjoy that. That's like that's just like the the competitive like the competitive instinct kicks in. Um, I've always loved that. Like when growing up, like the biggest thing that I dislike about being a backstroker is that I don't get to anchor relays. Like the adrenaline you feel when you're standing on the blocks at the end of a relay is is better than than anything I've ever experienced. So I'd love to I'd love to have a backstroke relay where I could anchor one day. 
but um but yeah anything anything that gets the excitement going is uh is something i'm gonna enjoy my plan was to come in here and give you a really hard time but you still you, you still you still po- you still podium you know after after just getting back into training and you had a big get in eventful summer and you you know but Early, you know, early world champs. You're off. Then you're 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 uh, you're getting engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I know I'm, I'm going to be coming to you for for marriage advice, Mel. One of these days. <laughs> you know, well, you've got you got te- you've been around a long time. You got teammates, peers, and I'm sure you talk. But it's it's I can't. You know, I was never in this position. I didn't get married until my early 30s. I was I was done. I think it's really challenging to, I, I think you have to be extraordinarily selfish to be a, an elite athlete. I can't imagine being in a committed relationship like that or, or even being a dad. So have you gotten advice? Yeah. I mean, I think it, I mean, a, every relationship is going to be different. Um, and so I think that the biggest thing is like Bridget's Bridget's incredible. Bridget was a college athlete herself. Um, She's still like she worked at Nike for a little bit. Now she works at Allbirds, so she's still involved a lot with like the 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 active lifestyle. She loves to go out and run. Like she'll go like Saturday mornings. I'll go and do a really hard practice, and she'll go and do a really long run. So like we're we're kind of I think we're always going to be an active couple. Um, the the schedule like the schedule does get does get pretty tough sometimes, but it really just comes down to communication. Like there's not really a ton I could do when she's out of the country producing a photo shoot. And like, same goes for me when, when I have to go to, to world championships in, in Europe for, for a couple of weeks. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know her. I I'm, I'm sure she's wonderful because I, 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 you know, I think that you're, I think you're a good guy with a lot of great character, but uh, you know, the, the most important question is, is she hooking you up with some all birds? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, actually today is our, is our six year anniversary. So, so maybe, maybe that's a gift. Maybe that's a gift I'm getting, but yeah, Allbirds is a, is a sweet company and she's got, she's got a nice setup there. Um, and she's their first producer ever. So like she really gets to create the role and, and make it everything that she wants. So it's, it's a really exciting time for her. There's a lot of stress on her plate, but, um, but she's got, she's got some really, really cool growth opportunities within, within that brand. It's, um, it's cool because you're, you're, you know, you're well past graduating and you're, uh, you're seeing her build a career and you know how this is, this is such an important step in, in anyone's life career wise. Um, but you're still in the pool. Do you feel like, wow, I'm missing this crucial step at a certain, at a point in my life when it should be happening. So is that, is that a thought in your head? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think it's it's always natural to to kind of look at what your peers are doing, what your friends are doing, and and think that that you should be doing the exact same thing. Um, but it's really as as simple of a conversation as like if I if I text my friends or if I'm hanging out with my friends and I and I ask them to to complain about their job, I mean, I'll I'll get I'll get a reply and and I'll get I'll get their their honest feedback. So. I do feel really fortunate to to be able to swim, um, to do this at a high level and, and still be just really excited about it, excited about improving, excited about going to the pool every day. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. So wouldn't you do anything, anything in particular on the time off, but between, you know, winning, winning world champs and, and getting back in the pool, anything notable happen? Yeah. I mean, notable things happened. They were, they weren't necessarily fun, but I had to do it. I had to do a nose surgery and then there an artery opened up with that. So I had to do another surgery. Um, so was, that was like, that ended up being like three weeks of pretty, pretty much sedentary, which was a bit of a downer. Uh, but, but outside of that, like got a little bit better at golf in that time and, and really like really just spent time with friends. I mean, I think that's, that's the biggest, that's the biggest challenge. Like, I've never I've never had a summer where I've where I've been off. So being able to to celebrate on July fourth instead of being instead of preparing for for a big meet that was something that that I enjoyed. My birthday is July second, so actually being home for my birthday was was pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, just living just living normal life, catching up with with everyone was was kind of the goal of of that time off. 
Your time is your own and it's precious. Uh, so that we were caught up. So now we're back to the World Cup. We're back to your. We're back to your performance. You're and let's look at it through this lens. You know, you're you're um, behind the scenes. Uh, I I like hearing from you. It's I don't talk to a lot of people who are young and who are actually engaged on the level that I have conversations with you, frankly. And it's usually about the lay of the land and management, international governing bodies, ISL. Um, you, you're, you're a student of the sport and a student of the business side of the sport. You were uh, very supportive of ISL, big player, big star on the, on the pro league. Um, we just reported recently, so I'm sorry, I'm reporting Konstantin Grigorshin, that his, that his, uh, his main business in Ukraine has been nationalized. Um, they're on pause. And uh, so this personally, this is where I'm feeling. I'm, I'm feeling like, wow, I really loved what was happening production wise, distribution wise. And that you guys had a platform, and and now I'm in the world of how do I compare that to World Cup? I didn't go to Indy. How do you compare? How would you compare the World Cup to ISL as it, as as you just experienced it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a that's a totally fair question. Um, I mean, I think like to be totally transparent, like my my stance throughout my entire career is that I hope that we can increase opportunities for swimmers. I think competitions are, are really like easy, easy way to do that. Having more competitions with prize money, great way to increase opportunities. I don't think that's the only way, but um, yeah, I mean, in, in comparing world cup to ISL, it's, it's completely different. And, and the difference is, is simply that ISL was a team format and world cup is an individual format. So with that, um, yeah, I think there's, there's, there's more, there's honestly more pressure when you're swimming within a team environment and kind of getting back to, to a previous question about like, what gets me really excited, like pressure and excitement are kind of the same thing for me. So I get really excited being in a, in a, in a situation where people are depending on me to, to win races, score points for the team where World Cup, incredible racing opportunities. I actually think the the quality of racing was probably better at World Cup. Um, but yeah, in terms of in terms of the overall excitement, it, it really comes down to: Are you team sport or are you individual sport? Um, are you a, which one are you a fan of? Do you see a, a an avenue where World Cup, where it, it's an individual performance, could ever rival what? ISL produced or is it, Hey, they don't have that team aspect. I just don't, I don't think it's possible. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'll shoot from the hip. I mean, I'll throw, throw my ideas out there, but I don't really watch any sport. That's not, that's not strictly head to head. Um, I mean, I think every, every sport that's, that's pretty widely viewed, you have one team versus another, or you have one person against another in, in an example like tennis um, even golf, by the time you get to the last day, you're typically looking at, you know, five or less people. And someone might go on a heater the last day and, and do great and, and shake up that leaderboard, but you know exactly who to focus on. I think swimming with, I mean, I think there's a long way to go in terms of, um, like camera technology is continuing to improve. And I think that's going to actually be really great for the sport because we're going to be able to get more angles. People are going to actually be able to see the athleticism that, that swimmers bring to the table. But I think, I think the more we can make head to head matchups, um, the more exciting it's going to be. I think as I've always felt that as the camera gets closer to the action, you'll, you'll, it'll, that's going to have a direct impact on people, uh, you know, stepping in and, the audience, you know, the size of the audience. It's uh, what I always go back to when, when I would drop in on elite programs and I would have a GoPro at the water line and I'd have huge swimmers sprinting at me and you would see the wave coming. It mm -hmm. just feels like, you know, Poseidon, a bunch of Poseidons coming at you like a, like, like gods. But uh, I feel like we could pull that off now. The, uh, I wanted I, I, I wanted I wanted to pick your brain about that. I also wanted to know in in terms of um, you know someone who's, who's who's been as consistent as you are on the level you are. I always think of you as like you're a smart guy. Do you start your career after Paris or you know with the games in LA 2028? Is that you know do you feel that pull? It's like no, I've got to commit. I've got it's going to be on U.S. soil. 
Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'm always someone where like I deal with I deal with nervousness or I deal with insecurities by by planning. Um, and the same thing goes for the same thing goes for a career after swimming. I mean, I think it'd be it'd be naive for me to not think about that um, and think about. I, I really like I view things. I try to think of things as simply as possible. So like my goal is what do I really love about swimming that I want to carry into my next career? And then what was I really good at in school that can translate to a career? And so taking all of that, like I have, I have some ideas, but yeah, I mean, while I'm like, while I'm competing, like I, I love that. Like I love, I love the swimming. I'd love to swim forever. And I'd love for it to be uh, financially viable to swim forever. But um, you know, I think there's, I, there's so many things to consider in that conversation too, with like Bridget being a part of it. Um, so there's, there's so many things to to think about, but geez, the thought of trying to compete in a home Olympic games is, I mean, that's so appealing and, and, and it's, it, it's super, that's like that. I'm, I'm getting chills right now thinking about it. Like it's, it, that's just something that's really exciting to think about. It was, uh, it sounds like you're unresolved and understandably, and I understand that it's, there's always a time issue and with, with, you know, how do you start your career or you're, you're a Cal grad, smart guy. Um, I was in the same position in 92. I'd come off the successful 92 Olympics and then went, and then the 96 games were in Atlanta. And I, and I sort of was building a career and also training and then went to Olympic trials and like, I hadn't, hadn't lost in forever Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I am in the third place club at that, at that trials. Oh, wow. And so I went from the experience of, of, of it being, wow, this is over. And that's really sad. And thinking, you know, I'm going to go home and, you know, swing through the, the fast food place and bed in and, 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 and be horizontal for a couple of weeks and do nothing. And the exact opposite happened. The next day I got a phone call from, uh, agents and then ESPN and and I was like okay I guess I'm working and then I'm going to the Olympics the reality is that if you don't compete in Paris you're probably going to work 16 hours a day mm -hmm. yep yeah so it's yeah there's, a, there's pros and cons to, to everything um but I think I mean the, the theme of this is that I'm I'm always I'm always chasing excitement like and there's there's a lot of like my goal is is never to just have one exciting path. Like my goal is to have a couple of exciting options and, and then pick which pitch, pick which uh, I think I'd enjoy the most long term. Let's bring it back to swimming, short course worlds. Why? Well, I mean, it's it's a great opportunity to race. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. Is December is always always kind of an interesting time. I think. Um, Cal semester is, is goes a little bit later than than other schools. So, like the last the last two weeks or the like the last two weeks before Christmas, the guys have the guys and the girls have um, they have their like study week and then they have finals week. And so there's just a lot of moving parts. It's it's hard to, I mean it's just hard to, it's just a hard time of the year. So I like the timing of of World Championships as as a good way to to stay really locked in um and then also like really really keep me keep me engaged in practice like day to day like it's it's fun to have like a a bigger a bigger level meet like that to look forward to um and it, i think it definitely increases the urgency to to really be pushing it as hard as i can in practice right now to to be prepared for that it's a long flight that's i was just thinking this is a long flight you want me taking this long flight right before the holidays yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, that, that's part of it, but uh, Hey, it's summer, it's summer in Australia. So that's, that's not too bad. And so you're, I, I hear you're smiling. You're talking about it being summer in Australia, which means we're going to have a pretty good rest for short course worlds. Uh, where where you're going to, you're going to have to, you're going to, well, you're going to rest just because of the travel and uh, you know, just being there. But uh, we you know how much is that, is that, could you do a, a mid season rest? Yeah, I think that like the dynamics of when it falls in the season, like there's there's a natural rest. Like um, Durden would probably be upset if if he heard me say that, but um, I mean, just the dynamics. Like you have 
you have Thanksgiving and then the college teams go to invite the next week. And then we leave the Tuesday after they get back. So, um, yeah, so I think it's just like naturally, like if there, if our group's four people or three people, when the college teams are at Minnesota, it's harder to really, really like grind in that time. So I think it's natural that, that we'll probably do some more things to, to get us set up, but, but really priority one stays stays long course world championships and, and long course world trials over the summer. And, um, and this is, this is a great, like, this is a great thing to do. And, and it's, and it's going to be really exciting racing. And I, and I certainly want to go in there and, and try to win, try to win gold medals and, and really contribute well on relays. Um, and, and so that's, that's my mentality going in. Like, I don't, I don't write my own practices, but my mentality is that I'm going to go in and, and compete really hard try to swim really well and, and try to win. It's kind of a funky year coming off of the, the 2020 Olympic games in 2021. So we're in a post Olympic year, um, but it's a world championship year. Did it feel like a post Olympic year to you? There's, there's are usually oh, yeah. different years. It's a mental break. You kind of, you know, you're, you, you, you can, you can run in fourth gear. Did it feel that way? Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about like the lead up to, uh, this last summer's world championships. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's a post Olympic year, but it's a world championship year. It's uh, you know, it's uh, but post Olympic years usually have a feeling to them. It's sort of like everyone decompresses their, the tension isn't quite as high, but it's, it's a funky time because the pandemic pushed the Olympics into 2021. Did it feel like a post Olympic year to you? 100%. 100%. I mean, I think there, there are more days that I had to force the motivation than, than in typical years. I mean, the, you hit the year prior to the Olympics and there's no, there's no forcing motivation. If anything, I'm trying to hold myself back from like doing too much. So yeah, it definitely, it definitely felt like a post Olympic year, but, but again, like that was something that I was really nervous about is, is coming off of the Olympics and, um, and just not wanting to swim. And so it was like, again, like I, I deal with like insecurities and, and pressure by planning out as, as much as I can. So I don't know. I mean, I think that's, that's probably the experience, the experience talking a little bit. <laughs> you said, so we, next year is um, 2023. It feels like it's coming so fast. I, I always feel like those, the people who win at the Olympic year, people who are going to win or, or, or do something interesting or be happy when the Olympics are over in 2024 they really did the, the the work the year before. It was all done that year. Is that is that accurate? Is that is that is is that your experience? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't not not that black and white. I mean, I would say there's there's certainly a point in the in the Olympic year, like in in 2024, where it's like honestly, all I could do right now is mess this up, and so like I definitely like I definitely think of it in in that way. But until that point, like, I think there's, there's always things you could be doing to improve, but I, yeah, I mean, I would say that the, the year before the Olympics is, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be on top of it in, in that year for sure. Uh, going into the world championships this past summer, it was, you know, our, our Russia, our Russian athletes, Belarus, they didn't compete. And you were quick to say, you know, yeah, they're not going to compete. And that's, you know, it is what it is because of the war in Russia's war in Ukraine. But you said, you know, world championships is still going to be world championships. It's going to be fast. And you were right. That was, it was uh, 100, 100 back was extraordinarily fast. 200 back was very, very solid. Um, do you have feelings or emotions? Do you, do you want to see your Russian peers compete in, in Paris? Yeah, that's, a, I mean, that's a loaded question. I think a lot of it's gonna, I mean, I think a lot of it's just going to depend on, on the dynamics of the world. Um, and, and that's the reason why they were suspended this summer. So like, I, I think as, as things hopefully improve in, in Ukraine, then yeah, I don't, I don't see why, I don't see why they shouldn't. I, I don't know if they're going to improve, <laughs> but it's a, uh, yeah, it's, God, yeah, it's uh, this, there's so much going on there. I'm I'm old coming at it from somebody who 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 lived as a child, you know, nine, 10, 11 years old through the 1980 Olympics. 
I missed all those heroes. Yeah. And then we had the sort of the, you know, the 84 Olympics, which wasn't a full Olympics. It was just Western nations. Um, I feel like there's that, that the Olympics should be a, um, should be a place where the world comes together no matter what. But I don't know that that's a popular opinion. It's like, I, I feel like if, if you're not old enough to experience what, what happened back then, uh, younger generations are, are, are more hardline, hardline. No, they yeah. shouldn't compete because there's a war. And, um, I don't, I don't know. I'm yeah, struggling. I'm struggling. Yeah I, mean, I, yeah. I think there's, uh, I mean, it's definitely a situation where there's a lot of mixed feelings. I mean, I think like the, the competitor side, like let's, let's raise anybody like that's, that's how I think. Um, but I think like trying to, trying to be empathetic to the people that make those decisions, like that's, that's kind of how I, that's kind of where my head goes with the, with the initial question is like, if, if I was the decision maker, what are all the things that I'd have to consider? And there's a lot of things. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I don't envy, I don't envy the the final decision makers on that. And you know what, you can, you can focus in the pool and you were prophetic when you said world champs would be fast. The Olympics are going to be fast. Um, the, our, have you met our new executive director at FINA, Brent Nowicki, still relatively new? Yeah, yeah. So I what well, at at Indy, I talked to him for probably 30 minutes. So yeah, I mean it's it's cool. I mean, I think anytime there's anytime there's new leadership in an organization, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of ideas. Um and so it's just kind of like, yeah, what they're gonna they're gonna be trying to figure out how to how to best serve swimming and aquatics over the next couple of years. And you know, I, I think they're they're very capable of of making great decisions for swimming. The the, the, the communication's a whole lot better. I mean, it's he's young. I think he's forty three now. It's uh, the, it seems like there's new blood, new excitement, and 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 I feel like the organization is a little more professionally run. But uh, this was a question that I should have asked you off camera, you know. But I think that that would have been your answer. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, there was a little there was a little dinner after after Indianapolis. So a couple of people from FINA, a couple of people from USA swimming, some, some swimmers that, that swam in, in the world cup as well. So, I mean, something as, something as little as that, where it's just, you're getting, you're getting a lot of people in the same room. Like that's, that's great. And like no pressure on, on any conversations or anything like that. It's just getting to know each other, opening up that line of communication. I mean, I think that something like that is, is, really good uh for the sport and, and really good for the future is there anything you want to do in 2023 that you could share with me no one will hear it it's like i'm going to do this this is what i'm in swimming or just in your personal life well, i'm going to get married in in 2023 so that's that's the big one um i would say outside of that i mean it's yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Like it, I'm trying to go best times. Like I, I really, I really want to do that in the pool. And and I really like the people that I have training with me, like swimming with Hunter every day is something that's, that's exciting. Just seeing the way that he approaches things. Destin's really taking a nice step forward in, in practice. And, and that's been really fun to train with. Um, so I, I think we've got a, I think we've got a really solid group right now. And, uh, yeah, so I, I don't see why why I can't go best times this summer and, and hopefully be faster in, in 2024. Refresh my memory. Uh, Dustin Lasco had a great trials, didn't he? What, wasn't his trials interesting? Was it that he did some things and was sort of like, I think he might be there. There was something about what he did. What, was his 200 back like a, an amazing 150? What was it? Uh, I honestly don't remember. Um, Destin is... Like, and, and frankly, with, with Destin, like, we, we, haven't, we haven't really scratched the surface of, of what he could do long course. So, like, I think I, I, don't, really, I don't really look at his past performances because I just view him as, as so much better than that. And, and so, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of, like, what, is, what his potential is rather than I don't even know his current times. I mean, I think he goes 156 in the 200 back, but he's got he's got so many different things that he's good at. So I, I can't name off all of them. 
like you, swim, swam, tracked his career through the age group years and just always a huge talent. It just feels like he's on the bubble right now and needs to break through. And that potential is very, very real coming up fast. But you would know better than we would. Do you keep him in place in practice? Do you step on him every few, you know, every every so often? Like, ah, oh, I'm Ryan Murphy. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, this this year he's been he's been kicking my butt, uh, and and I think like it's not. I'm not. I probably got into a really good training rhythm maybe a week and a half before Andy. I started to do some things where I'm like, all right, like that's good, that's good. But for that first that first month and a half or yeah, whatever it was of, of training. I, it was really just like put my head down and just, just take the losses on the chin. <laughs> I'll reframe. I'll, I'll, I'm going to rephrase that question. Imagine that we just, it's not him. It's anybody. Um, I used to enjoy this because uh, you know, you've been around a while and, and you've, you've accomplished some things, but in, in practice people would challenge you. And, uh, and I used to like to every so often go, no, I'm going to drop it in fifth gear and step on you. Just to just to let them know what's going on. Does Ryan Murphy have that that fifth gear? I'm going to step on you moment. Some days, some days I'm still waiting. I mean, when I'm like, when I'm in in really like in a great rhythm in training. Oh yeah, um, that that always takes a little bit of time within each season for me to to develop that. Um, so I'm not. No, I'm definitely not there at the moment. But we're doing everything I can to to keep on improving day to day and. and yeah, I think typically I can I can get up and move pretty pretty dang fast in, in practice. And and that's a um and that's a problem. Here's the thing, that's when you have so much talent in training, that's a problem. Because if you have too many racehorses and they're always gunning for each other, um it, 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 everybody suffers. We've we've seen that with big programs. Bob Bowman at one point had and had so much talent inside of six lanes. They just beat each other up every day because it was it was. Uh, I was not surprised that it didn't turn out as positive as people thought it was because it was it was so competitive. But uh, your ability to to know when to do that and when not to do that is is crucial in training. Um, so it sounds like you have the wisdom to know when and when not to. Well, geez, I mean, I'd love to do it every day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it really just comes down to like, I'm, I'm really into following the plan that that's set out. And so different practices have different goals and I'm trying to, ma- like, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that my goals line up with, with whoever's coaching that practice. Like if, if they want me to, to be sustaining heart rate above 150 the whole time. Like that's, that's the goal. And like, I'm doing it. And instead of like, if there's something that's descending there, like I'm still going to be holding my heart rate above 150 on the first one. So like every, every practice has some different goals and and really I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to follow the practice like as, as closely as I can. Thomas Chacon, you, do you text it back and forth with him? What's up, buddy? Well, I saw him in I saw him in Indy. He was at that he was at that dinner with um with, with all those people. So yeah, I mean he's I don't think his English like his English isn't uh isn't awesome, but I mean you can just tell like someone's I don't know, their their body language, how they're interacting, like he's a yeah, he seems like a like a good dude. All right, buddy. We talked too long. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Or are we we're gonna shut it down? Uh no, nothing that I could think of. I wish I was recording because you went, you came on eating lunch, and um, that 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 have been fun. You know, we've actually we, we had we had Lydia Jacoby on when we were doing some live streams, and she would show up and she'd be eating breakfast <laughs> during live streams. Um, so you know, it's 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 media ready. Yeah, you yeah you gotta eat when you can. You know, I didn't want to be falling asleep on on this interview because I was hungry. So. Yeah, you, get, you gotta gotta squeeze in the meals whenever you can. Is this nap time, or did we cut into your afternoon nap? No, no, it was just, I had I had morning practice, and so then, so getting back here, I had to I had to take something down real quick, uh, just to get some get some energy back. All right, buddy, good talking to you. Hopefully, we bring you back on, and oh, yeah. uh, as we as we as we start that run up to 2023 World Championships. Good stuff. Good stuff. Happy to join whenever.
You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.